I don't care when you're watching it. It's Dunk Tip Tuesday. Dunk Tip Tuesday. Yeah. All we do is dunk. Dunk Tip Tuesday. Boy, you don't want to jump. Dunk Tip Tuesday. No, my bird is going up. Dunk Tip Tuesday. And I do it for the love. Dunk Tip Tuesday. And now I do it for my subs. Dunk Tip Tuesday. And I can never get enough. Dunk Tip Tuesday. And I ain't never giving up. Dunk Tip Tuesday. Thank you for stopping by. Welcome to Tuesday. And that's how we do it. We're here. Three things you need to be doing every single day as an athlete. And not just an average athlete that wants to play some sports. I'm talking people that want to dunk, that want to have an elite vertical, and want to dunk on people so hard that they leave the entire genre of the sport. <laughs> so, yes, that's what today's about. And we're going to focus on training. So it's all about training because I can go in through the body, mind, and spirit, which is actually the course I'm developing. So I'm in a Locktober month for those newcomers here, locking in about daily habits. And I'm making a new program that's going to help athletes go from above average to elite. And that is something I'm really passionate about from the training to the nutrition to the sleep habits, the healthy habits, the, the daily habits, the reading habits, mindfulness practices, meditation, visualization, all of that in one course. So I'm super pumped about that. The sleep itself, by the way, if you guys don't know me, sleep is number one in everything, and it's the foundation of energy. And so that is going to be a solo course on its own, and that's almost done already. So super pumped. Stay tuned. Let me know what you want to see. Let me know if you have any questions or what do you want to see. I would love to make things for you. So training. Today is focused on training. Three things you can do training-wise as an athlete daily. And this is not for people, like I said, this is not for people that are just getting into sports. This is for people that are pushing the limits. And when I say pushing the limits, it's about the doubts in your head. It's about overcoming all these limited beliefs you have, which is what dunking did for me. Whole nother video, more about my story. Okay. So number one is the warm-up test. And I learned this from Ben Greenfield's book and from my own experience, but in Ben Greenfield's book, Beyond Training, he has a ton of things understanding your recovery and when you're ready to push yourself. Because it's easy for me, and I'm sure it is for you guys, to push yourself past your limits, and it's easy to overtrain. So how do we find that stimulus sweet spot, which is something I'm, I'm big on. I think that's the art of training right there. Again, whole nother topic, but one huge takeaway is that going through your warm up because so many days I'm almost starting to like it, kind of like David Goggins, not now, but like the past freaking years. When I get to the gym and I feel a little sluggish, I feel a little tired, I'm like, this is what separates me. This is when I push hard and push through it. But you got to be smart as well. If your body's telling you that everything's tired, then you need to rest. So we don't, I'm aware of this whoop thing that tells me my HRV, my heart rate, how I slept. So that's really helpful. Um, but there's other ways and this warm up test is one of the things you could be doing and you need to be doing daily and I'll tell you why right now. So when you warm up, before you get to the gym, if you're sluggish, you go through the warm up, you may feel fantastic. It may have just been the cobwebs from sleep that you shook off and now your blood's pumping and you're feeling good. On the flip side, you may be feeling good or you may be feeling bad before the warm up, but if you go through the warm up and you just do light movements and get a sweat going, breaking a sweat is the key and you feel worse, that is a big sign that you're overtrained or you're very fatigued because the warm up gets those processes going. So you got to learn it for yourself and I could help with that. I do the coaching and I love learning about the, the mind and it's very connected with the body because we're trying to fight through these doubts and push ourselves, but we also have to monitor our body and think long term. So the reason why I say you need to do this daily is because when you break a sweat, so many processes happen throughout your body from the hormones, the, 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 the oxygen and the blood that moves through your body and your, your limbs. It's really healthy to get that blood moving and sweat. You sweat out toxins, you release all these different things. And so that is really healthy for your body. So at the minimum, I highly encourage you to sweat. In fact, I say you need to sweat every single day. And Again, this is for the elite athletes. So if you're sweating every single day, you're not going to overdo it. You're not going to overtrain. And that's why I say the warm-up test is huge because if you go through your warm-up and you get that sweat and you don't feel that good, you didn't push yourself. You didn't you didn't overdo it where you're going to be worse the next day. You're actually going to be better. And that is a huge key because active recovery, there's a recovery day, rest day when you do absolutely nothing. I think, in my opinion, when you just sweat, even if it's just a walk, a brisk walk, even if it's just like a sauna or a hot bath, when you sweat, you need that blood to flow through your body to help the reco recovery process uh, further itself. Because if you're not sweating or moving that blood, it's just staying stagnated. And that's where I stand. 
Number Tuesday. two. So this one is, again, for the elite athletes, for you guys to think about every single day. A lot of us are training and already doing this, but it's cardio. And so for someone like me, some days like today is a perfect example. I did a lot of dunking this week. I dunked twice, and in the middle day, I still did some handles and some little bit of jumping. So my legs have taken a beating, and I can feel my, my feet and my legs are sore because I'm doing more than usual. And so today, I still want to get cardio in. And number one reason for that, I learned from Ross... Edgley's book right here, conveniently on the shelf, The Art of Resilience, I have a whole video on this, that cardio increases your work capacity. So if you're an athlete and you're trying to get stronger, and this is for any athlete that's doing endurance ultra marathons or, or trying to be an explosive athlete, I truly believe that strength and stamina go hand in hand, hence his book, that's what he talks about in one of his chapters, but I also believe just it just makes sense that if you're trying to run a long distance, you need to be healthy and you need to have strong muscles to endure, endure that. And if you're trying to be explosive, you need stamina to be able to have the, you have the explosiveness to jump your highest, but you also want stamina to play a game and play your sport. You don't want to just be explosive and dead. Um, and the key is stamina increases your work capacity. So if I do strength training, I do deadlifts and squats, but then I do a uh, cardio later in the day as well, or another workout. Now my body's getting more stress, but in a different way. So my overall stress is being increased, which means next time I go for strength training, I have more ca capability of perform putting stress on my body. So simply put, it increases your work capacity. Now, uh, these two tips so far, they kind of work hand in hand because if you do the cardio for the day, you're increasing your work capacity and you're getting that sweat. So that's a, that's a huge bonus. And now the other thing I was going to say was, my cardio today will be swimming. So I'm going to stay off my feet, but I'm still getting that heart pumping. I'm still getting that cardio and I'm still increasing my work capacity without getting, uh, without hammering my feet and my ankles and my knees. Mine are all healthy. I just want to be gradual with it. And that's a whole nother video as well with tendon health and understanding how long, how to gradually improve those things and increase the, the stress you put on those. Swimming is a great example of a low impact cardio. So maybe you go for a walk or maybe you go on an elliptical where you're not pounding your joints the same way you do for your sport. So whatever your sport is, if your sport is swimming, maybe take time off swimming and go for a walk or a run or something. Maybe that's more leg intensive and less on the arms. So low impact cardio every single day, increase that work capacity, increase that stamina, increase your strength. Last but not least, go to Tuesday. recovery slash mobility. So the reason I bring it up in kind of both is because the reason I want you to do recovery every single day is because for athletes, especially in my niche of dunking and basketball, we're running a lot, we're using our legs a lot, we're jumping a lot. And when we're standing, like I'm using my arms, I'm Italian, so I use those at more than usual, more than average, I'm elite at that. Uh, you, you're moving in the full range of motion with your upper body. But a lot of times with our legs, if we're sitting, one, we're restricting blood flow when we're sitting on our hamstrings. A lot of us sit all, all day long. I used to have nine to five as well, so that's why I have this standing desk now. And that's a huge killer of blood flow. Should have done it before, but there's the old desk. There's nothing really fun about this, but very satisfying. I don't see the instructions. Whose idea was this? Put the instructions on the cardboard. Oh, here we go. All right, let's get to work. Get off your ass. It's time to level up. So many metaphors. Let's go. <laughs> so the recovery mobility is be really emphasizing getting the full range of motion in your legs. And the reason that's important is because when you get in those full ranges of motion, you don't have to go full range, but you're just kind of trying to stretch in those ranges. It's recruiting blood to those nooks and crannies of your body. Again, helping the recovery process. So you wanna do things like stretching, foam rolling, and simple functional movements where you're kind of doing dynamic stretches. And the reason for that is because the foam rolling, what I love about that and these functional movements, you learn about your body as
as well, which is a huge takeaway for an athlete to do every single day. For example, I've been foam rolling more than ever. And what I've noticed is that my my calves some days feel very pliable and that's a great way for them to feel where they feel strong, but they feel open and they feel healthy. Other days they feel tight and coarse and rigid. So they feel like really just stuck, healthy, where it's getting blood flow through it and you could use it properly. It's got the full range of motion when you do exercises. So foam rolling helps you build that body awareness. You can understand, okay, today this is a little tight. Yesterday I hammered this leg a little more than this leg. You find the imbalances, you find the weaknesses, and that's gonna help you really separate yourself and help your body reach the next level because you're gonna have those details add up for you to be an elite athlete. And I have a question for you, a question of the day, but before that, quick bonus. Go to Tuesday. Meditation, I'm gonna have a whole meditation course specifically for athletes, so stay tuned for that, but meditation, look it into it, five minutes a day, transforms every aspect of your training. From being able to understand what you're doing to your body with muscle growth or muscle damage to understanding how you're actually using bo your body. When you're mindful, you're pulling with the right muscles, you're pushing with the right muscles, you're focused on every single rep. So my question for you is why are you not chasing your dream, athletically or actually anything? Because whenever you say, what's your biggest dream? I can't do that. I'm too short or I can't do this. No one's ever done this. How come when no one's ever done it, why does that make it impossible? Here's a really good takeaway for you. And I actually heard David Cho say this on Rich Roll's podcast. And I loved it because he's an artist. He's had a very uh, troubled life where he's got a lot of pain and suffering. And he had a part of his life where he thought great art required that suffering. And now he's coming around where he's thinking positivity and a healthy life. You can still create great art that transcends generations. And the reason that's so amazing is because he's like, there's not many examples of that. I don't even know anybody that's done that. And maybe it does. And he said to himself, you know what? Why not be the first? And that's my takeaway for you. Whatever you doubt, think about whatever goal or dream you want. And if no one's ever done it, you think it's impossible because it's never been done. If you were the first, how would that feel? Does that resonate with who you are and who you want to be? That is what I want you to do. Think about why not be the first. Russell Westbrook's why not? Why not be the first? Why not be the first four foot dunker? Think about amazing that is for me. Why not be the first 5'10 guy that, that murders people with a dunk? <laughs> why not be the first 5'10 dunker who posters someone in the game, breaks the backboard, and eats the glass? Why not? And that's it, baby. Roll the friggin' outro. Stop making excuses. Stop doubting yourself. Start now. You're wasting time. You're, you're, you're limiting yourself. The only obstacle is your own mind. And when you can overcome that, you can overcome anything. I truly believe in no limits. And get to freaking work. It's all work. We all know it's work. Do the work. Do the inner work. The inner work represents the outer work.